afternoon or evening, wherever you are, um, and welcome to Android Developers Office Hours. This is your chance to come and ask us, the Android Developer Relations team. Um, we've also guests from the Google TV Developer Relations team. Uh, any questions you'd like about developing Android applications? We, as usual, won't be covering any product announcements or um, speculating on any future releases, so don't waste your time answering that, asking those questions, but um, do ask us any and all Android development questions. So, um, who do we have here? We have, I'm joined on the left by Rich Hyman. Hi there. And Matt Gaunt, and in the room we have Al Sutton, as always. Hey guys. Al. <laughs> and is that Tal down there on the right? Hey, Android, Andrew Kelly, the one man moderator machine. Yeah. And <laughs> uh, looks like London have dropped out on us. Bridge. Welcome back, guys. Uh, Welcome back. Welcome back. It bodes well for the rest of this. I was just trying to open the chat window. <laughs> okay, it is open this time. Uh, and welcome, Andrew Kelly again. Andrew Kelly again. Oh. Now we have feedback from. Okay, ignoring the feedback, it seems to have been muted now. So news, uh, while, while we wait for a few people to join us, what, what news is there? Google Play Services has finally launched. It's no longer next week, as we've been saying for a little while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so has anyone had a chance to check that out yet? Not yet, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I read the blog post. Does that count as checking it out? I'm really looking forward to writing my first Play Services-based application using the OAuth 2 and being able to log into the services. Uh, Plus one button, and of course that's going to affect the plus one of your application in the Play Store, and that might affect your ranking. Who knows? <laughs> Let's see plus one buttons inside apps. But there's also um, many other things inside the. Yeah, yeah, we were recently at a um, hackathon where lots of people were trying to access Google Drive, and it was quite painful trying to get um, have to use the web view to get your. Um, non-anonymous, I guess, um, scoped OAuth 2 token, so you can now do that really easily with a really consistent user experience through, um, through Google Play Services. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing some apps integrate those. Is the Play Services library going to be supported on Google TV as well? Um, I believe it will be, but um, <laughs> that will probably come with the native Google Play Store, which is coming. Um, Next, next week. week. <laughs> yeah, next week. Everything everything happens next week. Manana, manana. <laughs> cool. Is that a Chris Baines we had just pop in? Hey, Chris. Hi guys. Oh god. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Timing. Someone phoned you up telling you you're on a hangout. <laughs> oh yeah, my phone. <laughs> you had a, a busy day the other day, I saw you updated a bunch of your libraries. Yeah, I've just um I took all of September off, so I've just been messing around for the whole of September. Um, so yes, that's so pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so that's just fun. Do some housekeeping. Nice. Do some stuff. Fun. Yeah, it's good. Okay, so we got a question from Andrew. Inside the chat window already. Yeah. Does Google Play Services allow posting to Google Plus, or is it an API still coming soon? Uh, still coming soon. Um, as far as I'm aware, Google Plus allows you to. Post something to someone's timeline, but it's it's essentially you're posting it to no one. It's not public or anything, and then you have to select the circle. Like the user has to go into Google Plus to do it. But even though I don't think that's Google Play Services, that's just Google Plus. So you're talking about the history API. Yeah. So it's essentially a bit like how instant upload works. You can send stuff to somewhere which is just owned by you, and then from there easily share it later on if you want. But I don't think that's all. Yet. Yeah. No, I wanted to check that because it's definitely mentioned in the Play Services documentation, but I think it's just coming soon against history. Okay. So the only sharing is via the plus one button right now, I think. As far as I'm aware, the history API is still a, a developer preview, so they're still tying that down, so it's not worth using in production apps until things are stabilized a bit, I'd guess. Yeah, I would guess as well. Um, the, the documentation says something similar, but still, it's great. It's getting rolled out uh, to all devices. Probably open it up. And um, it's mute. Uh, what else has happened this week then? 
Um, we're talking about tablets this week. This week is Tablet Week on for all the shows on the Android Developer Network, as I just coined it, <laughs> at developers.google.com forward slash live forward slash Android. So um, Rito and Ian and the guys from America will be with you. Ivan and Nick will be redesigning the apps. And we're Done. specifically making a point of using the word tablet in this show so we can feel included in the Mountain View program as well. I'm holding a tablet. Tablet. <laughs> this one here too. Bet you wondered what that was. And uh, hopefully the audio quality is improved this week. We've got a brand new microphone. Um, previously, our microphone was cool. <laughs> if you have issues with the audio quality, just let us know and we'll try and uh, fix it. But this, this little puppy that we've got here, I kind of want to show you. So before we dive into moderator key, does anyone have any questions now or anything you want to talk about? No, I'll stop man. Moderator it is. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, we should also explain. Sparky's uh, not here. Mm -hmm. It is a public holiday in Germany. Apparently not tied to Oktoberfest. Apparently not. Definitely. In no way. No, 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 definitely not. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's not around, so next week. Uh, I don't remember what it was tied to. Banning wall, wasn't it? Is it? The wall coming down, I think. How is it? Uh, OK, on to the moderator. Go through, Rich. Hello. Hi. Hey, Andre, from Germany. I hope you're watching, even though it's a public holiday. I want to use set preferred network type method to switch between uh, 2G and 3G. Apparently, however, available to public. I'm guessing it says apparently, however, it's not available to the public. Is there an alternative to set preferred network? I personally don't think so. I've looked into this before for the battery widget. People have asked, how do you switch to 2G? And once we were in an airport, maybe in the Czech Republic somewhere, where we wanted to limit our data, and we were writing a little app to toggle between 2G and 3G to save battery life at the time, it was a couple of years ago. And we didn't find a way uh, without just sending the user to the network setting screens. There's no public way of doing it, yeah. Uh, it's a secure setting. Thank you to everyone who just muted at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thank you, Andre, but I think not. So yeah, it's one of these um, secure. Is it secure setting or is it just hidden? I can't remember. I think it's secure setting. Secure, yeah. Secure yeah. Secure setting. yeah so might add their own. Yeah. So unless your signature or system, um, so unless you kind of have access mm -hmm. to the platform key, uh, so unless you're building your own ROM, you can't do it. Yep. Next. Uh, my app. This is from Aditya from Fairfax, Virginia. Hi. Hey. My app has a feature where users can upload documents or pictures. When I try accessing attachments in emails that are not downloaded, the URI object has the scheme of content. Is there a way to convert this URI object so it has a scheme of file? You would almost certainly need to go to the content provider that that scheme of content is pointing to and try and get it from the content provider. We have a post on this for getting Picasso images from the gallery. So if you do the image chooser and gallery comes up, and instead of choosing a photograph that they've taken on the camera, they choose a photograph that was in Picasso, mm -hmm. uh, again, you'll get the content URI. And you need to go to the content resolver to get that image. So you won't be able to resolve it to a file directly, but you'll be able to get hold of the content through its respective uh, provider. Yeah, you basically go to the content provider and get a file descriptor back, don't you, which you can then do stuff on. So have a look at that and search for retrieving Picasso images from gallery as well, because there's definitely a, a more detailed post with the details of how to do it on that. And they will come back with content URIs. We get that quite a lot uh, from companies that have photo editing applications, things like that. They don't expect selected images to come back as a content URI. They expect files. It's one of those um, things that you look for in an application as well, is its ability to read all kinds of um, content shared to it. So the one I often find people falling foul of is when you try and attach a photo or upload a photo and it's coming from a Picasso gallery rather than you know a local image. Um, so yeah, it's really, really is good practice to be able to handle every single content, like every form of URI you get passed back. It works on tablets, tablets, tablets. <laughs> and it works on tablets, tablets, that's good. Keeps on the ball there. We've got one question appeared in the G Plus uh, asking when Google devices will be available in Ukraine. And as per the announcement at the start of the show, um, we'd probably have a lot more viewers if we could talk about that kind of thing. <laughs> but we can't. Oh. 
Uh, uh, some more chat and sidebar going on about 2G, 3G. <laughs> and Neil, yeah, we can't talk about uh, potential plans. I don't know any anyway. Uh, Chris, can you wish your battery back to Okay, they're just chatting amongst themselves. Just the generally, like the, the discussion is going really, uh, basically saying someone really wants to be able to control 2G, 3G settings to save battery. I kind of think that's the domain of like the, the user's choice. Mm -hmm. Like the user can cho choose that and they can set that for the settings. I mean, it's one thing if you want to give a little hint and saying, you know, if your app's related to the battery, sorry, maybe like showing battery levels and have a link out to take you to the page where you can um, change the setting. That, that's one thing. But you probably don't want to be going, and even if you could, just changing the setting under them because that's kind of well it depends what your app does but it sounds like it might be an unexpected behavior of the app. Yeah. Your battery's running low, would you like to blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Go to network settings. I know a good battery widget that enables you to do that. The battery the battery widget. <laughs> <laughs> the battery widget needs a redesign. Works on tablets though. <laughs> uh, how do I animate on the expand and collapse events of an expandable list view? Hmm. I would look at the API for expandable list view. And see if you can just override the animation events. Usually, it's on the. Um... I've never looked at it. No, I've never looked at it either. No. Does like... anyone anyone use expandable list view? I have, but I never changed the animation. Uh, it's a quick look. Most of the time, the animation tends to be, or the the default animation tends to be quite quick, and it probably would annoy users to slow that down any amount because it's nice once or twice to see a fancy animation, but it's always good to make sure you get the data to the user as quickly as possible. Maybe they want something quicker. Yeah, expanding is just done by smooth scrolling, so you can't change it. Okay. Looking at the source code. <laughs> so again, so your options are uh, to make create your own. I guess you could um, yeah subclass it, and if you want to do your own behavior there, that would be the way to go. Then you could, Quite but your own special really, really think about if that's something you really want to do. Let's have a look back on the thread. So we've got a few more new joiners. So hello to Paul and Paul and Richard who've joined us, and who else we've got Neil. Uh, so yeah, feel free to. You ask questions here or type in the sidebar or anything. Hi, guys. Um, ah, um, you were going to send me a Stack Overflow link for your NFT question. Yes, I put them up. I probably didn't send it. I found out your name is Nick Butcher. Um, I've sent one to Al just as a... See, he said he might have a look at the service and see if there's a way of getting to the timeout um, another way. Um, yeah, I... Double check the Stack Overflow. I think I put a link on this comment here, but anyway, if you want me to send again, I can find you out on G Plus and do that there. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, the main thing is just wondering if anyone's got any ideas, um, uh, alternative is to do do a build so we can demo this, and where we might be able to find it in the source. Because I have a quick look in the source uh, around all the NFC stuff, but I don't think the constants are in the Java. So I wonder if there's a resource file or something it's reloading from. Any ideas? There's um, a class, let me just to get out, the tag class in Android NFC has mm -hmm. a get tag, uh, get tech list method, and you okay. can get a list of technologies that are supported by the RFC reader from that, and pass that to uh, the get method to actually get an instance of the NFC class for that particular type of tag. Yep. You can then use the manipulation methods on that tag instance, so set timeout on that to alter the timeout for that specific type of technology tag. Okay. Um, just to explain, hmm. I that works in Gingerbread um, because you can set it because you get access. The, the program's launched far enough for the code to be run. In the cases of uh, ice cream sandwich and uh, later, the sound goes on the phone like you, you I it doesn't even reach the breakpoints or the or the code at that stage. So I wonder if there's a how to change the, the default timeout so that it gets it allows it to get further because in some cases I believe it's point three of a second. The um I'm just looking at it now in the android.nfc.tech package there's an iso dep class which has the get method which can get you an instance of that tag class without actually using the RF radio. Okay. Um, let me just pop up a link to it in the chat sidebar. Yeah, great. Um, and that you can manipulate the set timeout on that 
the tag that's returned from that method. And from looking into the code, um, there is a lot of source code in the framework base, but there's also some in packages, apps, NFC, and there's a lot of the management code in there. Mm -hmm. and from looking at that, unless you call close on that tag object, you were returned by the get method in um, mm -hmm. the ISO depth class, the timeout should stay all the time you're reading tags of that class. Yes, I believe the closing would reset the timeout, and I did one quick test of a static tag that I'd set the timeout longer to see if that worked. I just gave, gave it an hour, just a long shot. It didn't seem to work at that moment, but I'm willing to try again. I'll look a bit deeper into it. Okay, I'll put the po links to the methods into the comment section of this Hangout post. Yes. You can grab them from there. Thank you. No Thank problem. you very much. Cheers. Excellent. Thanks, Al. No worries. Uh, the next moderator question. Oh, Andrew Kelly's put one in the chat first. Andrew asks, what is the style attribute I need to change to alter the text color for options menu option menu items? I've managed to change the title color, but couldn't see the option menu style. Is this an action bar? I'm uh, yes. Oh, you want to have a look at a post written by? Yeah, I, I never remember these offhand, but there's a handy post. Hopefully, have you seen the post I wrote on the Android developers blog? If you ask, yes, he says. And the have you looked in the attached well the links um, code project? <laughs> so uh, if you look in the um, in the styles file in the in the code project there, it should give you the um, attribute you need to override. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forget it. I've, I've, I mean, you've overridden all uh, everything else, but not the actual text color. There's one text color for that. Uh, right. So change it. Okay. Uh, so it's it's. <laughs> I forget it offhand. I can't remember. Did you try Android code on text color? <laughs> the way I write these, the way I, I worked out which ones to change, I always end up just looking in the original themes file. So if you look in your uh, Android home slash platforms slash whatever platform slash data uh, value, there's the styles and themes of XML. Just they're not particularly long, and they're you know if you're not too scared by XML, they're fairly readable. Uh, so you go in there and you kind of search for like action bar options and stuff like that and um, and you kind of walk it back upwards and find out which style it inherits from and, and you find the kind of the value you can override. That's the way I always end up doing it. So sorry I don't know offhand. But it may not be separately styled to the actual text on the action bar. It'd be interesting to see if there is it's probably inheriting a, a default one, yeah. It might just be something like colour or text colour though. Might be worth trying. Mm. There we go. Cheers, Andrew. Do you not have a, a microphone, Andrew? You, or are you just shy? Okay. Silence. So, <laughs> yeah. Sammy from Pittsburgh has quite a broad reaching question, uh, which we could do with you coming online ready to talk about. Because the question is uh, I have an app idea. How do I create it into an app from beginning to finish? <laughs> right. So, uh, I guess, Gosh, are you a coder? Are you looking for people to contract work for you? Are you? I mean, are you a designer? I don't really know which parts of the role you can fill in yourself, but um, or you just want to make money from the idea, you can just license it to someone without actually building anything. Yeah, it, it's quite a, a wide-reaching question. Um, <laughs> it's not much to say with that. Yeah, so if you there. are just, uh, you know, if you know a bit of coding but never done any Android before, I'd say a great place to start is um, Android Training. So if you go to developer.android.com slash training, uh, there's some basic guides there which talk you through how to create your first Android app. So it kind of assumes a certain level of knowledge of Java and XML and so on. So if you have those, then that's a good place to start. Uh, beyond that, I guess we kind of need a bit yeah. more context. If you've just got an idea, I would start with a piece of paper and a pencil and start sketching out and start thinking about how you want the actual application to work and flow and get excited about the concepts behind it. And then you could go to a, a user group in whatever technology you want it to be delivered in and have a, a talk there to some people at the user group about it. I'm sure there's plenty in Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different approaches you can take. Step three, profit. Step three, profit. Use tablets. <laughs> Do an extra large layout. Oops. OK. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Read it. Go for it, Rich. Because it's one of those questions we can't answer. Will all developers on Google Play have reply to reviews soon? 
Uh, sorry, we can't talk about things that aren't already announced. Has anyone in the room been using, uh, had access to reply to reviews, been in the beta? Yes. No? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> you have? Have you had um... I've replied to comments on the Natural Reject. Of course I have. And it's been, been good? Have you seen an yeah. uplift in your rating? No, not particularly, but my latest version, I've got this really weird bug on a Sony Xperia phone on Ice Cream Sandwich with a widget, and I can't replicate it. So hey, and I've got access to most devices. I think they're Which just fine. Which phone? Uh, some Sony Ericsson P19i something, and then also on their Walkman device. Ah, uh, the P19i. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know this thing existed until someone reported a bug on it. Um, I believe it's quarter VGA, and in landscape mode, the widgets are a bit freaky. Who knows? But I'll blacklist it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good solution? Stage hammered. And so I'll start up here and get hold of one. Thank you very much for your feedback. You can no longer use the application. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good reply. <laughs> OK. So uh, someone just posted. Uh, I just said, yeah. So Nick. Your mocks in design and action on Tuesdays were very impressive, especially the tablet ones. Oh, is this uh, the TripAdvisor? You're not a designer. <laughs> That's True. a statement. What's your secret? Have you read any books or resources? How did you get up to speed with interaction design and the designs that you've done? Uh, How did you get into this? Because certainly a year ago, you weren't designing stuff as part of the team, and now you're the go-to designer in our team. Yeah, how did that happen? I think you just fake it till you make it, right? You just... <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I've always been really interested in UI design, and. I think I'm pretty like I've got quite attention to detail. I've got quite a good focus on detail. Like I, I always notice really small things that are wrong, and I think that probably helps uh, when you're designing stuff because I keep on going over and you, you see how long I spend on these mocks, <laughs> go over and over and over them again Pounds until until they get better. Um, I don't think there's any secret. I think I read a lot on the subject. So blogs like Yohani's blog on Android UI design, Smashing Magazine. I, I'm a big fan of. I read a lot of articles on that. Um, practice. I think. Um, the more you do it, the better and easier it gets. So um, simple things like learning your tooling, like Photoshop has been a quite an up, up, uphill battle for me. I haven't used it much. I'd used GIMP a fair bit when I used to create apps. I used to create all my own assets in, in the GIMP and got fairly proficient at that. But then relearning Photoshop, because it's, um, that seems to be what everyone around here uses. And so you can share uh, PSDs and so on like that. It's really handy. Uh, that's taken me a while. Um, but I think the biggest thing that's helped me is um, working with another designer. So there's a, a UI team here at Andro um, in London who do some of the design for the Google apps, such as Google Now is designed here in London. Um, so that team has been awesome. They've been really accommodating to me. So I've gone in there and bugged them and said, like, shown them sketches and talked them through and shown them mocks and got feedback. And going around and around that, that kind of like feedback loop has been super helpful to me. Uh, so no secret, just a lot of work, <laughs> really. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't call myself a designer yet, but I'm I'm trying to like walk like one, I guess. So have you forwarded those designs to tra like TripAdvisor and stuff, or is this, what, what what's sort of the end goal with that kind of side? Uh, <laughs> the goal is just to kind of like increase awareness of like you know it's one thing to talk about what Android design is, and I'm, but we think it's it's better to show it. To, like have I think yeah. the before and after format is really useful. It's not so much the goal to have the company take these mocks and implement them, or you know incorporate some of their elements. I mean, that's amazing, but that's a bonus. It's more to have like a practical insight into what everyone in their apps can do and like, okay. you know, how to look at a certain type of problem and how it might be solved in a more Android-y kind of way. Uh, so for the TripAdvisor one, um, my colleague Adam in, in New York actually works with TripAdvisor. He said he's going to send them to them. So you're more than welcome. In fact, um, Glimmer, the week beforehand, where we did the, the redesign of that, I was in touch with the developer and sent him the PSD. So he says he's going to um, use it. Yeah, well, developers strike back. They often say they're going to take a lot of the feedback on board, design-wise and uh, best practices-wise. Uh, yeah, same for Camera Zoom. Alex said he was going to uh, incorporate some of the ideas. Excellent service. If you want to have a chosen one, get voted up on the moderator, get your app redesigned. And they're not complaining from here that they don't like the design of it. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, granting immunity. Yeah, as long as you implement it well. I am people some designed badly once and they just left. Um, <laughs> True story. True story. Andrew Kelly again on the uh, action bar theming. Have you looked at just re theming the uh, 
action drop down style from theme hollow or theme hollow light. So you override hollow light and then you extend theme hollow light and then override the drop down style and then change the text color inside that. The other thing to look at is if you're trying to change the text color, generally the text color is generally determined on it whether you're um, inheriting from a, a dark or light style. So obviously the dark style has light text and light style has dark text. Um, so if you're trying to change the colors of the action bar, make sure you're inheriting from the, the correct parent. So you might, even if you have a light theme, you might want to inherit from the theme.hollow.light dark action bar. Uh, if you have like a darker accent color to your action bar, and that will give you the right text color. So I'm just wondering if there's a bigger problem here, for whether you're not inheriting from the right like, parent style. But Chris Baines does say he spotted android.textappearance.hollow.widget.popup.menu.small. I think that's what the actual style is in the slot platform. I don't know where it, where that's found from, but I'm just finding the source. So just backtrack and try and find that where that's in the theme. I don't know. I don't it's think it's been one of those. Yeah, Andrew, so which is the parent theme you're inheriting from? So you're from, inheriting from hollow light, so you're therefore getting a dark textile by default. And what's the color? And what's the color oh. of the? Well, I guess the options mainly that you you're trying to make the text show up against. Come on, use a hex code. Use a hex code. The custom graphic background. Just use dark action bar then. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, inherit from theme dot hollow or theme dot show dot dot light dot dark action bar will give you light text. It could be easier. There we go. Okay, any more questions from inside the chat, inside the um, Hangout, before I jump to the next one? Hello to a few new joiners as well, who we've got here, we've got oh, Richard Thompson's joining, come back, and Zavi, I think that is, with a fun little profile photo, hello to you guys. Feel free to shout out or uh, type away if you've got questions live, or you can just chill out and enjoy the show. <laughs> Might be worth putting in a plug for the new build system that um, the guys over in Mountain View have made available. Yeah, it goes Aventor. I've uh, not really read up on it yet. Has anyone else looked into it yet? I've started looking at it, but it's based on, is it Gradle? Um, yep. So I've got to get everything set up to use not it. Not linked to an IDE? Nope. It, it's very bare bones at the moment. It hasn't got Lint, hasn't got ProGuard, stuff like that. But it, it Hasn't got NDK, yeah. So it's it's basically the start of it, but it's a case of the earlier you get in, the more likely you are to get the features you want. So uh, if anyone's really interested in the build system or has been hitting their head, um, have a look at the ADT Dev Google Group, and there'll be details on how to get more information. Okay. Richard Thompson just put in the chat window, uh, how do you find designers? Uh, there isn't an easily accessible repository of designers that I know about. Uh, Dribble. Yeah, I was going to say Dribble. There's UI. Dribble with three Bs. That is, is a uh, basically a social network for designers, and they has quite a big focus on jobs. Oh, well, yeah. Two good things. But there are plenty of great design companies around. Uh, I bump into them at various meetups when I'm in London or down in Brighton, things like that. So go to meetups, talk to people, um, have a look at apps that you like the way they were designed. See if you can find out who designed them. Have a look at the package name of another application that you like the look of, and work out who really made it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of my favorites. Uh, um, Tim Box, who I think asked the uh, the wider ranging question, how do you make an app, has chimed in in the comments of G+. He says uh, he needs to write a simple app. It just does some maths, but it needs to have a good UI, as he's been watching the design hangouts. Good man. Uh, so the question is, any tips on who to get quotes, where to get it written? Uh, he knows some simple code, um, but it will take him too long to learn Java. So he's not going to do it himself. All right, so how do you, well, it sounds like you, if you're willing to pay for the application, like if it's going to be a commercial affair, then you might want to approach something like, um, it just depends where you're based, but here in London, there's an awesome user group called um, the London Android User Group, or Lundroid for short. Uh, so that's a great pool of talented developers, and they have a LinkedIn group, which they like to use for, um, for job approaches, and so you could approach those guys, ask for some quotes, ask for, uh, see who's around and what, what they can offer. Um, I don't know if it's not a paid app, if you're trying to like just do something for fun or for charity or something like that, then that might not work. Um, anyway, oh yeah, I should say the, the, the URL for Lundroid is meetup.com slash android. 
because they got in there early. <laughs> uh, any other ideas? No, I think that makes a lot of sense because you're going to get a good mix of people working for agencies, mm -hmm. freelancers. Um, yeah, I think London Road's a good place. Any, is this App Inventor still? Didn't that get donated to Apache or something? Like, yeah, is yeah, that where yeah, software yeah. goes to? Uh, is it university got Apache? Say again? It was a university, wasn't it? It wasn't a... MIT got it, yeah. yeah. It was MIT. Berkeley, weren't it? Yeah, so the, yeah, there was a project called um, yeah, App Inventor, which apparently got donated. I don't know if it's still usable, but which was a kind of a drag and drop type interface for building an application. So uh, you could perhaps pursue that to try and get a prototype up and running and show people around to try and generate some interest. Um, yeah, that's another thing, actually. Is often, if you're trying to get people on board, it's often quite help helpful to have a an interactive kind of like prototype. So you could even do that with something like App Inventor, or if you use something like um, Balsamic, which is a, a mocking tool, you can design your mocks in that. And there's often there's a ton of applications which will understand those mocks and how to link them together. Or you can have an interactive PDF where you have like uh, certain areas are hot where you click through and it basically launches another PDF or another screen in the PDF. So you can do, do things like uh, that. Adobe has some good tools for mocking as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from Tobia in Italy. This is a good question. I'd like to have a good answer to this question. Maybe I'll work on it. To obtain a heterogeneous grid view, like the one in Google Plus or Pinterest, or IM, which was reviewed last week on the uh, Android show, should we extend ABS disk view, adapt view, grid view? Are there any tutorials available? I've been really impressed with some of the heterogeneous grid views we've been seeing coming out recently. And I've often looked at them and wondered quite how they did it. Uh, how they're doing their layout of all the different grid items and things they just look really good. So, um, oh, so that's not an answer. <laughs> no, I say I, I, I was. I was, I waiting, for, I was waiting for it. So you? <laughs> no, I thought about this. All my grid views have been all very neat and tidy and aligned, and I haven't done anything which, um, as yet, looks as good as any of the the grid views that you've seen on here. I don't know. Where it must be I, custom. I think they're just going to be custom myself. Yeah. Uh, rows of custom items. It's not too difficult to do it. You just need to know how it, how layout and sizing works. Yes. Yeah. So it's not too bad to do. I hear yeah. Chris is... You'd still want it based on an, adapt, an, on an adaptive view if possible. And you want to have asynchronous mm -hmm. loading into the, the thing. Obviously, once you've got a layout that looks good, you're still going to want it to react very smoothly. And there's a lot of that code that we've built for you already for things like grid views and list views uh, that you should review. Uh, review, yeah. sorry. So whether you can abuse a grid view and force it into being heterogeneous, I don't think you can. It would have to be many of these grid views. It would be horrible. I think and you choose the column size, don't you? Yeah, but that affects the column size of the next row down as well. Mm. You can't do it on a, a column per row basis, right? I wonder if some of these are actually individual. It's just the list view, and each sometimes the list item is subdivided I think that the IM into multiple might be a list view. Because everything's at least the same height on a per row basis. Mm -hmm. Plus, there's stuff in the list view where you can say, I've got views of multiple types, and then when you recycle it, we'll try and recycle the view of mm -hmm. the same types, and then it's performance. Yeah, depending on which way you go, I would see if you can squeeze it into a list view and just do a, a custom list items inside a list view. It'll be the simplest way, mm -hmm. and you'll have a lot of control over it, and you'll get all the benefits of. Um, Has no one solved this problem yet? Is it no, an open source uh, heterogeneous list view or grid view? Or I can hear Chris typing as we speak, trying to start. <laughs> <laughs> and so the code reflecting his glasses. Yeah, it sounds like a, a problem yeah, that we I think should we work together and solve. One. Hmm? We could do a good list view based one. Hmm. It wouldn't be totally heterogeneous, you should still get rows of items. But... Yeah, if you do go down the route of writing your own custom widget as well, there's a great talk from DevOx two years ago, I think, from Ramon Guy and, um, and Chet Hart, which they, they go over the basics of the what Chris was talking about, the layout passes, measuring passes. Uh, and it's really, really critical to understand those ones, and especially understand which ones happen often, so they need to be super efficient and not, not creating any garbage. Um, so I advise you to, to seek that out. Uh, if you go to parlays.com, is that where all the DevOps talks, or just Google DevOps Romangi creating custom widgets? We'll probably get you there. I might have to build one. <laughs> Maybe this yeah. afternoon. I'll mock one up in Photoshop. You mock one up, I'll build it. This is <laughs> good teamwork. This is how it should be. Um, anyone else got anything in the chat? Or, sorry, inside the Hangout before we jump somewhere else. Hi, guys. Um, can I ask um, a further question, please? Sure. Um, last week, uh, Nick, you said that there was a 
I just missed a talk by someone at Google, an NFC Wiz guy. Is it someone I can get in touch with, or or who it was you were referring to uh, at this I, time last week? I don't remember saying you missed a talk. I just I think I was saying send me the link to your question, and I'll forward it on to some of the NFC gurus here. See if they okay. Oh, I've put it on. I've put it on your. Uh, I found you on Google Plus. I put it on there um, because I'm. I'm doing a lot of research in this area at the moment, so it would be handy to kind of follow up a few more things in more detail. Thank you very much, guys. I'm loving the uh, show today. Oh, good. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for asking good questions. Have you seen the latest question we've got in the um, Plus Post? No, I haven't read You should have a look at the Plus Post. Oh, it's from, from Mayhem. Our good friend Michael Mayhem of ex-Googler, Zoogler. Uh, do you have any advice for... Hi guys, design question for you. What do you think about two drop-down lists on the auction bar, auction bar, both filters that will work together? Imagine if you had a second filter for read data. So I'm guessing this is um, related to Michael's Player FM, is it? The podcasting yep. app, mm -hmm. uh, podcasting website, web app he's been making. Um, yes, uh, I can think of situations. In fact, I think Gallery, initially when Gallery came out, uh, on, on Honeycomb, it had two drop downs. You could spin between photos and videos and then swap between something else. Albums, something. I don't remember that. Yeah, but I think they removed it. <laughs> yeah, I can't think of any. There are quite a few which have kind of filters at the top. Um, Just trying to think about this. I'm trying to think of one that I can point to right now that might actually look quite good. Yeah. Without knowing, feel free to send us some mocks if you want to. Um, if you've got any sketches, of what it's going to look like, Mike. Um, I probably are trying to avoid it. Like it sounds quite. It's quite hard to understand at glance, perhaps. Uh, depends how it's implemented. Like how if if the two sets are like not overlapping, then it might be simpler. Whereas if you know you have to change one first and it, and it alters what's in the second list, for example, then it's going to be quite hard for it to be glanceable and change. It might, it might call for something like a. You know, like a filters button, which actually reveals either a subsequent control or a dialogue. If Wait, you he's in the chat. Here he is. How you doing, Mike? Oh. Seems like he's behind and catching up. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks to Al actually for letting me in here. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, basically, it's it's pretty similar sort of analogy to Gmail, right? Because basically, the idea is to try to use it as a kind of um, download manager. So instead of having a download manager that you could just filter on. Um, sorry, am I massively echoing here? It's okay. No, it's okay. Carry on. We can hear you. It's fine. Uh, but um, yeah, it's basically that. So, so um, you, you can see download status in one filter, which would probably be just be an icon, and on the in the other one, it would be labels, tag sort of thing. So you thought about following the Gmail example, so having the kind of label type button at the bottom. I don't think he has. I think he's plugged his headphones in, and now he can't hear us. Yeah. Mike. Mike. <laughs> um, I haven't seen that. Oh yeah, okay. That's but not really actually because I've got I've got the constraint of having something else a player at the bottom, so I'm trying to keep it simpler. Hello. Yeah, but the idea being that you, you click a button which takes you to a subsequent screen, which lets you then you know have a full screen pick of what data you're trying to display. Yeah, wow, it's got a crazy delay. Three, two, one, and... Could you even do that implementing um, wise? Because uh, does the action bar... Uh, sorry, can you explain? Through? Sorry, I'm having some massive... I seem to be having some massive audio syncing. Yeah, we, we can sorry. tell that, Mike. Uh, sorry, Nick, can you repeat that? Are you listening to this on a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I repeat it? Okay. Uh, so, I was just saying... Is it possible to just have a button which launches the full screen to let you pick the slices of data that you want to view, rather than having it all on screen at once? I mean, that's kind of the approach. That you <laughs> no. Um, okay. Yeah. No, it's just that I, I think I, I can keep hearing myself, but. 
Okay, this is weird. <laughs> I think it's just laughing at the podcast joke. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we should come back to this one. This is yeah, being right. a little bit painful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, guys. I'm having some trouble here with it. I keep hearing myself at the same time. So yeah, let's, let's um, it after that. Yeah, time. basically, I mean, the. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it for now. I'll leave it. Sorry, I'm having just trouble with audio. <laughs> no, it's all good. Okay. Uh, so, we were talking about something else? Before there was another question. We could start on the next question. That was there was a question in the um, in the G Plus post as well from Adair, who looks a lot like Johnny Depp, um, <laughs> asked whether you can put an action bar at the bottom um, as it's stupid to have it at the top. <laughs> Bold statement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, no, by default you can't control the placement of the action bar. You can go into split mode will be at the top and bottom when the device is narrow, but um, you can't actually control where it's placed. You could certainly create a custom control which looks a bit like uh, an action bar, but it is at the bottom, but that's your choice. Um, as to whether it's stupid or not, I almost think that's um, less yeah. important because it's mostly you would use it for its familiarity so that users recognize it and know how to use it. Um, so whether you think it's stupid or not is one thing is, you know open for discussions with I guess Rich Vulture and all the design people who created it. But um, right now it's such an important and standard element of your um, in your toolbox that I would wouldn't deviate from it unless you have a really good reason. You mind if I say something? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's a good idea. Oh, hi. I'm a deal, by the way. Hi. The picture is nothing. Um, anyway, the reason I said. The word I'm sorry is uh, stupid because I wrote the question several times, and it didn't save. I really have no idea how this happened. I elaborated and explained, and every time I refreshed the page, the question disappeared. So the last time I was just <laughs> this one just stayed. I don't know why. No worries. Anyway, what I meant by it, but was uh, I have a Galaxy Note, and it's pretty much impossible to touch the the action bar that's on the top and most new apps now use that action bar and uh, it's very hard for me to reach there because I, I can't hold it with one hand and use the, the buttons up there but if the buttons were on the bottom like uh, with the split one it's a lot easier to to use the buttons that are at the bottom because I don't need to reach all the way to the top yeah I agree uh, that certain phones are getting really really big and uh, but do you not can you even use it, the Galaxy Note one-handed? Like, is that possible? Yes. Most old apps, all the old apps, the ones that are from Gingerbread that didn't update themselves, uh, are very easy to use because all the buttons are hidden in the menu, menu, and the menu is normally at the bottom of the phone. So I don't. The Galaxy Note has the menu button, unlike the Nexus and other new phones. Um, you can just hit the menu, and they pop up. They pop at the button, so it's very easy. Yeah. Uh, the 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 top is normally just for information. I just look at the top. I don't need to touch it, yeah. so it doesn't matter. And I, I intend to get the Note two, so it's going to be even harder. Wow. Uh, at, at risk of saying you're holding it wrong, kind of question <laughs> answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think um, it's the general direction of Android that. You know, have a lot of devices have these soft buttons at the bottom of the phone. So generally, having your controls right next to those is problematic in itself because you can um, have missed touches where you're touching the kind of the system home and back buttons uh, with, rather than the in-app controls. So I generally think separating away from that is good. Uh, but I do agree that some of these bigger phones can be hard. Um, I don't really have a good answer for what to do about actions, but I'd say this is why it's really important to have swipe on tabs as well. Uh, whenever you have a tabbed interface, because it's safe, it's not much of a big attack target. Understand. Thank you for your. Support. Mike, so you joined us. Mike, are you in real time? Yes. Uh, sorry oh, about that. I actually had the double whammy of not only leaving the YouTube uh, video uh, on, but not having the audio in the Hangout because I normally uh, record my podcast using a Hangout, and I had it piped into Soundflower, so I was hearing like one perfect audio just ten seconds off. <laughs> oh, dude. Wonderful. I'm glad it's sorted out now. I was, I was sorted. Sorry. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. So, so just to explain that again, basically, I mean, the idea is to have uh, one sort of set of tags in one drop down and a kind of 
initially it would just be an icon in the action bar, which if you opened it up, that you would see the different statuses, like whether it's downloading or downloaded or so on, which gets you around the traditional download manager interface. Um, sorry, we just had a system update pop out <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> That's okay. why we all went quiet for a second. Uh, so it's trying to get around the download manager kind of concept by basically making the whole thing a set of filters, if you like, um, by adding an extra filter for download status. Yeah, so my worries about having them next to each other is that it's kind of a bit hard to pass and this might look a bit complicated. Could you just have like one in the drop drop down and one one like in line in the control itself, like in the screen itself? Um, it's a little tricky because down the bottom we've got a player at the moment in the design. So um, it's it's a little hard to have extra. It's just you know trying to avoid adding. Well, the extra not necessarily at the bottom, but like a, a like a row underneath. Uh, a second row below the action bar. Yeah, for like a subsequent filter. Could you? Could do. I mean, trying to avoid it because we've also got tabs as well. All oh, right. <laughs> Could you have a, a view pager or something to s sort of swipe through the different states? So if you... Well, you've got tabs already. No. Oh. Yeah, I mean that's that's actually a kind of separate question because I would like to have a view pager to tab between different entities, you know, effectively labels or genres. But I don't know. Um, it seems like with tabs that you want to do it swipe between tabs. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah but... Especially if you have lists of similar things, so like different views of different data, then yeah, that works really well with tabs with swiping yeah. tabs. Yeah. Um, Marie trying to chime in with some feedback as well. Oh yeah. See Marie says. Hello, we can help. Uh, two drop downs have no different weight. Good is a simple structure. If you have a different logical structure, like a grid view or menu on the top and a drop down inside, it would be easier. Right. A grid view or a menu view on top. So, can you just des describe the problem again? So, you, you have a list of podcasts and you yeah. want to have different ways to slice that by downloaded versus downloading. And yes. Then yeah, the kind of status as well as like errors and so on. So you could quickly see, you know, what's actually errored, and mm -hmm. um, and then the genres basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. I I'm just trying to wonder if you can like have that in <laughs> one complete Go control somehow. With uh, the it. music player's view of having the genres uh, split horizontally by. Uh, like a view page or in tabs, so you have all the podcasts, then you can swipe for genre one, swipe for genre, and then at the top you just have one drop down to filter. Right. All the of the, the status. Ones. Yeah, I mean that that is a possibility. I have to look at that if you could. I mean, how would the user discover what's actually there? Because I like the idea of being something like Google Plus so or you have email. The tabs at the top, so they can see which genres they're I going see. to on the tab bar. And then the tabs the would tabs still be. Tabs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is possible. The only thing that there is potentially tabs inside there as well. Okay. <laughs> we could potentially get around that, but I, I see what you mean. And then the tabs would potentially be able to scroll as well. Like you wouldn't have to fit all the tabs. Yeah, if you look at the music right. player on uh, on Android or the Play Store, is something similar as well. Or the Play Store, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the you Play could, um, yeah. yeah, you could, you could also, you know, you, you by default go into an all view, so you can see all your podcasts, but then you can swipe across to go into genres. Okay. No, that's good. Yeah. I mean, just um, in terms of. I mean, is the actual drop down? It sounds like you're guiding me against it, right? Like it's this kind of unstandard and double drop down. Yeah, I, I would. I don't like the sound of it. It's okay. probably, yeah. Actually, you'd have to make your own custom action bar as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's a good overview. Thanks. All right. Cheers, Mike. Good to see you again. But yeah, post some sketches on Plus, and um, we'll have a conversation. All right. Yeah, definitely. Sounds like a good plan. Okay. How are we doing? More questions? We do have more questions. And thanks, time. Marie, as well, for chiming in with Thank you, help. Marie. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let's see if we do. Um, slightly strange question. Maybe just give it. <laughs> OK. What are the developer features from Jelly Bean and Ice Cream Sandwich useful for building point of sale applications? It would be nice if you could provide code snippets of examples. I guess uh, NFC would be useful for point of sale applications. Yeah. Uh, it's a very specific question. Uh, I mean, you can do anything you want <laughs> in Android. 
Uh, that's what I was just going to skip it. Uh, I, re I interpret that as a lot of people want to create kind of kiosk type applications. I was wondering if it's that, where you, you, know, you don't have the home and back and recents button to switch out the application. I mean, I was wondering if that was the real question at hand here. So I'll tell you the best way of doing that. Put it in a case where it comes up the home, back, and recents button. Yeah. <laughs> include any functionality you want inside your. Like they did in that magazine recently. Mm -hmm. Which magazine was it? Uh, Entertainment Weekly. Entertainment Weekly, where they embedded an Android device inside in between the pages. But you could just see the screen, so you didn't really know. Uh, people often ask, actually, how they can lock down Android uh, for user controlling inside house, lighting controls, whatever it's going to be. And without changing the firmware, the easiest way is to put it in a custom housing so you can't actually get to the buttons. There is an app, isn't there? If you have root access, you can hide the system bar. And if you have root access, that. you can do a, a ton of stuff, yeah. Seeing that. So that could be an option if you're doing a kiosk solution. Or go and play with the AOSP. Have a word with Al about the AOSP <laughs> and uh, how to customize it and build it yourself and uh, go, go down that route. But if you have actual devices, just change the housing they're in. OK. Onwards. Any more live questions in the room? Or should we carry on with the moderator key? Uh, Nick, it's Paul here. It's not about a question. It's just that I checked my notes from last week, and you mentioned a guy called Trevor at Mountain View time. Does that ring any bells? Oh, we, well, we that, did. Yeah. yeah, that was during. Um, that was during last week. During Mobile World Congress, I said that he wrote an application to read the um, badges at Mobile World Congress. So we oh, okay. can put on the Android stand and scan people's badges using NFC. So he gained quite a bit of NFC experience at the time. He hosts the developer office hours in the Mountain View time zone, uh, which right. is eight hours from now, 10 PM uh, UK time, they have their office hours. Uh, so well, do you know what his surname is? Trevor Johns. Trevor Johns, yeah. He's on uh, code.google.com slash team. All of our bios and everything, and G plus pages are listed at okay. google.com slash team, which renders very well on tablets, I've heard. <laughs> Thank you, guys. No okay. Worries. Yeah, but you can definitely post the same question to the, the US time zone, and you'll get a probably a more expert answer. Cheers. I think we got one of London's famous freezes again. I'm here, Al. Who was that? I'm sorry, I didn't. It's Paul. Hi, Paul. I think everyone else has gone frozen. I can see some people still moving around. It's just the London guys who uh, I think they're missing a slot. So I'm going to drop out, and uh, <laughs> that should give them a slot to rejoin in. Okay. And we're back. Hello. Okay. Oh, I all dropped out, yeah. For that reason. Hopefully you can get back in now that our other person. We can hear you. Cool. Thank you very much. There's okay. Al. Al being very gracious again this week. Cheers, Al. No problem. <laughs> you pop in there as required. Um, so we do have a question that we've answered before. Uh, I am executing an async task inside an object uh, intended to be part of a library. Actually, maybe that's a slightly different variant on it. Still. How can I deal with orientation changes? Because as we know, orientation changes on Android uh, are going to kill your activity and restart it. But if you're in a library, it's a slightly different question. I wonder. Why well, you have to be quiet? You have to be quiet because you're in a library. No, yeah. <laughs> no it's up to the. I mean, you're not necessarily have the activity. It's going to be up to the uh, person who's using your library to make sure that. They manage rotation changes and keeping your state and things like that. So if you're using an async task inside a library and you don't know what context your library is being used in, it's going to be much harder. So I think, I think you, <laughs> you can't really. You either have to 
Done. You'd have to do it as a service, wouldn't you? Yeah. And then just say to the developer that you've got to include it in their manifest so that the service can be fired off whenever. A service would be a much smarter thing to do. Yeah. Or a user loader. Or, I was going to say, extend um, async task loader as well, because that will handle all the orientation change for you. But rather than async task. Certainly, I think you've answered the question yourself inside the question. I don't use async tasks inside libraries when you, you don't have a context of how the user's going to use it like that. You'd have to be very specific to the user on how to implement your library or they'd be seeing issues all over the place. Quite a rotation. Yeah. But I'm surprised it hasn't come up earlier, actually, saying that I thought we'd answered it before. It is a slightly more interesting slant to the async task issue. OK. Anything else coming in on the uh, no. G plus thread? It's only four minutes to go. Anyone have a final question in the last four minutes? Or should we just spend four minutes saying the word tablet? Okay. Are we done with the moderator? Are we done it all? Yeah. Oh, damn it. There's another page. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the other pages with questions have already answered. <laughs> my device has a screen reader. <laughs> <It's funky laughs> Why doesn't my writer? <laughs> I know. Have we done it all? Have you ever found out who done it, Rich? Or do you just miss that last page? <laughs> 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 so we've answered all of the questions except the ones on the last page. Uh, we have two more. My device screen has a resolution of 800 by 480 and an HDMI connector. How do I get full HD res in all apps when I plug it to full HD monitor with HDMI cable while connecting it to monitor with apps on screen are in 800 by 480, but films are in full HD? Correct. Okay, that's just... Yeah, by default, um, at the moment, Android just is mirroring, so it will just do mirror what's on your screen, so you'll get the same screen resolution on Android, uh, except for the special case for video views, which will do something funky. Yeah, it's going to be hardware overlay stuff, isn't it, going out over the, the HDMI. Uh, there's nothing you can do about that. There's certainly no APIs. Nick was looking at different ways of detecting when HDMI cables have been plugged in, but yeah, you, you can't actually change what's going through. A uh, question in the sideboard says, and Andrew Kelly asks, can HMI mirroring be disabled? That's why I was looking into this issue. Um, there's no platform level way of doing it. There's um, certain OEMs include APIs, so like Motorola has an API for detecting the HMI state and reacting accordingly, and other people do as well. Uh, there is a event, a broadcast event that happens when uh, HMI pl cables plugged in and out, but it's currently hidden for good reasons, I assume. So I, you can't rely on that always being there. Yeah. So and right now, it's the not a great reasons. story. Uh, how can I get screen captured from device with 25 to 30 frames per second to my computer? HDMI out. Or only to another monitor, like on presentations on Google I.O., device does not have HDMI or any other video connectors. Uh, Google <laughs> I.O., we use HDMI out. There's also DLNA. DLNA, you can also use DLNA. Yeah, if you want video content and things, it doesn't necessarily mirror. DLNA device, doesn't do mirroring, though. It won't share the device does. screen. It will just be able to share like a specific content, like a file or something. Other good things are the new hardware accelerated emulators. I made a video using one of those quite recently, mm. and it came out very well. It's it's been, good. Good, you, know, you can watch video, you can launch YouTube in there, and the video frame rates are good. So the hardware accelerated emulators with images provided by Intel. And um, GPU acceleration are very good. Yeah, I'd say you even need HDMI out. But HDMI or out is the way to go. Emulation is your best. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be the, the fastest, most responsive one with the highest resolutions. You can like BlueStacks maybe even on your PC. I don't know, I haven't tried that. BlueStacks um, runs in a window, so it probably would have the same problems as, um, say, using the emulator or using a virtual box. What do you mean the same problems? Uh, recording from a window, unless you've got an application that will do that well and give you a good quality output, you yeah, uh, but yes, yeah, like desktop screen recording is. There's tons of software apps that will do that for you, right? I'm I'm not sure. I've not come across any ones that I'm I'm a hundred percent happy with, but I've seen a few. That I used one on Windows a while back. I haven't used one on Mac. Um, That's what Roman used when we did that scrolling tricks with the sticky scrolling and stuff. Just desktop recorder seems to work really well. Oh, cool. I'll give it a shot again. Yeah, the hardware emulated emu hardware accelerated emulator it certainly makes the emulator much more performant and useful for this kind of thing. But yeah, the best bet you're going to get is uh, well, one of my favorite tricks is using a real device with the show touches turned on, which which can create really good product videos. Show touches, good tip. 
And to finish it off, Paul asks, is anyone going to DroidCon London in late October? Wait, one, can I, one more thing? Sorry. Mm, go uh, on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I heard in a news app called AppyGeek that uh, Google released uh, a template for building apps. But yeah. I've not seen it anywhere. Like, I've searched Google. It's in your ADT. What? It's in your ADT. Your Android developer tools inside a Clips plugin. Oh. You a new project in there. It's a template. Uh, it's not being ported across to IntelliJ at this point. Um, so, yeah. No, it's in ADT. It's in ADT. All right. I'm, I'm a software engineer, but I only work with uh, computers. I only started working with Android now. But uh, currently, my app looks like C. It doesn't look anything like Java. I don't use threads and stuff like that. It, it simply looks like C++. So uh, oh, to be an app that's created. Huh? Are you using Eclipse to write it? I'm using a what? Eclipse. Ah, Eclipse, yes, of course. So yeah, it's in Eclipse, in the development tools. You can just do file. Yeah, I know. I've downloaded the, some of your uh, sample apps, but the the spaceship one and the snake. Hmm. These like, are oh, they've been in since. Is that the only ones I have access to? Are there anything newer? Like I need to update something? It doesn't do it automatically. What are you writing? A game or? I'm making. I'm currently making a game. Yes. Uh, you could look at if you Google for what's Chris's game called again. Wind up night. No, 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 no the open source replica one. Replica Island. Yeah, Replica uh, Island. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Zoe. How Replica Island? Yeah, this is a former teammate of ours who um, open sourced a game written. In, it's all written in Java. Um, yeah. Yeah, and so on. So that's um, that will help you bootstrap if you want to do your, your game loop and all that stuff. There'll be some good code to copy. Again, a little bit dated, but I've still. already made several games, but they all use. Uh, I use one class to make uh, like a loop, mm -hmm. and the rest of it look just like the main in C. So it just repeats that one. So all the threadings and all the yeah. advanced stuff are not available for me if I use it like this. Oh, yeah, definitely peruse a replica island source code. It'll give you a lot of ways to handle input and um, you know yes. happening on the device. So definitely go splunk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much for joining us on this week's Android Developer Office Hour EMEA edition. Uh, we'll catch you all next Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Tablets. Tablets. Tablets.